Welcome to the 2024 British Grand Prix reaction. I'm Sogan, and I'm here once again with Captain Ajax. Hello, 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 hello. Very excited to be here because we had again. You know what? We've been we've been treated this season, but we had yet it's another one of our best races thus far. I <laughs> me. <laughs> crazy. Um, so yes, excited to be here and excited to discuss all the goings on this weekend. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the best way to put it. Uh, it was indeed a, in a crazy race. And <laughs> we're both, I think, very, very surprised by the result itself. Uh, I don't think anyone <laughs> expected such a, such a weird thing. Although you expected the British one, two, three, which at one point was a, was a likely thing. But unfortunately, one of them retired and the second one who got a, got a Ferrari strategy. So. <laughs> So only one of them actually managed to uh, finish the race on the podium. <laughs> we'll get to him, obviously. Yes. Um, yeah, let's start. Uh, British Grand Prix. We expected it to be uh, pretty exciting. Both both of expected uh, a McLaren pole position. One of us as uh, a British, well, British Grand Prix winner. Uh, for it was a McLaren winner, Lando Norris, which um, I mean not the not the worst pick. But no, unfortunately, no, unfortunately, uh, it didn't quite pan out this that way. Um, let's start with the practice sessions. Obviously, we had some rain involved as well. Uh, we were participating in a quite, quite, exciting, quite exciting Grand Prix. Uh, as we saw, uh, like four teams pretty close to each other in the practice session. Even Aston Martin was pretty close. You were obviously at a, at a TwitchCon, so you probably uh, didn't wasn't as uh, as involved as I was, but then uh, yes. then qualifying came and we were treated to some exciting things as it was it was rainy <laughs> and the rain brought some uh, some surprises of course as well. Uh, let's start with Sergio Perez out in Q one once again. <laughs> that's the that's the thing we kind of kind of go through like every single week at this point. It's uh, Sergio yeah. Perez. <laughs> he just cannot finish. He's been out qualified by, uh, uh, well, including um, including sprints, he's been out qualified by Logan Sargent. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's a, that's a crazy stat. Yeah, he's been all qualified by Logan Sargent throughout his season, in, including the sprints, obviously, which is a insane stat. Like, like. <laughs> In a Red Bull to be out qualified by a driver that's meant to lose his seat in the Williams. <laughs> like, yeah. Yes. It's just utterly crazy. Utterly, yeah. utterly crazy. That's apparently what uh, what gives you a two year extension at Red Bull. <laughs> I, I, I'm surely he's going to be dropped. Oh, I, don't, I don't know what's happening. Yeah, at this point, I don't know who would replace him because uh, they always obviously don't want to put Yuki into the car, and Daniel is just not performing. Uh, at least last Grand Prix, it was just another weekend of being outperformed by Yuki Tsunoda. Especially in qualifying, it was like like seven ten tenths of a second, so quite the usual what we were used to at the start of the season. So, yeah, uh, mm. even the recent uh good form from daniel the two two races before the british grand prix we kind of got get to the to the usual track of british grand prix and silverstone and yeah uh the usual gap between yuki and daniel showed up I and mean, even in the race yuki scored points daniel was in the middle of the midfield so just not great mm -hmm. uh, i have no idea who who would replace sergio if if it was to uh if it, decision to replace him was actually uh, permitted, so I don't know. <laughs> we shall, I, 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 don't, yeah. I, I think it would probably end up being Yuki, uh, just off the early season form, but well, we don't know, and it doesn't look like we'll ever get to know. Yeah, yeah. I guess we'll, we'll never see. Because he just seems to have that seat permanently. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, it's a very weird situation that we're in right now. I would yes. honestly love to see Liam Lawson in the Red Bull. Because, like, I mean, 
what's the benchmark? Like P20 or uh, getting knocked out in Q1? Like, I mean, <laughs> if Blossom was led into that Red Bull, I don't think he would, he would like, yeah, if the benchmark is so low that getting knocked out in Q1 is, is the, is the benchmark. So, I mean, if we, get, if we would get into Q3, that would be like the greatest thing ever. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, let Liam into that seat, and well, you never know. You could, you could, you could make a great driver out of him. Yeah, yeah, true. But we shall see. We shall see what occurs there. Uh, but yeah, that was the that was the biggest thing. And he just again utterly nowhere really in the race has to fight through. We get that the Red Bull isn't that quick anymore, but surely it's. Surely it's got enough pace to do something. Obviously, he got messed up by uh, strategy stuff, but yeah, it just oh, it just seems a sad time to be uh, Sergio Perez at the moment. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, when it comes to the other Q1 knockouts, it was I believe that the the Sauber of Valtteri Bottas and the two Alpines and the Kevin Magnussen. So. Not the greatest weekend for for Alpine, especially after uh, they score like five weekends in a row. Uh, I predicted them into, for the most impressive team. Looks like I uh, got no point there, <laughs> but uh, that's, it's kind of what I'm used to. Uh, yeah, let's get to the key two, where we had uh, the shock Q2 exit of Charles Leclerc. Once again, uh, <laughs> Ferrari not being the greatest team uh, after the Monaco Grand Prix. I have no idea what happened, but it just, it seemed like he finally won Monaco, but he kind of got cursed after that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I literally, I don't know what occurred. It's, it's weird, really, because science is doing relatively well. Uh, obviously, he isn't staying with the top teams at all. Um, he definitely doesn't seem to have that top five place pace, but bar the fact that uh, stuff keeps going wrong within the top five. Um, but, you know, McClure's just miles away. Um, and that is worry. That, you've got to be worried if you were, uh, you know, that those teams, uh, if you were Ferrari, the fact that McClure just doesn't seem to... Maybe the Crow's ultimate achievement was winning uh, was winning the Grand Prix. Um, winning the Monaco Grand Prix. Because now it just seems a big gap between him and the top the rest of the top uh, three teams, basically. Uh, you're right. Like we were talking about a potential title fight maybe after Monaco is with like thirty points. Something like that between Charles and Max, and then even in the constructors, it was extremely close between Red Bull and Ferrari. Now we're looking yes. like it's like driver style is pretty much set. Like even if Max does get uh, the first, the third fastest car, it, we we saw in Silverstone that he can still deliver. He can still be up there with with the other drivers fighting for the win. So like Max is Max's style is out of the question. He's pre pretty much a four times champion, but the constructors, if Perez keeps this form of not scoring any points, we could de definitely see McLaren closing up, especially if they actually make up their minds when it comes to the strategy. Because yeah, this this weekend was yeah <laughs> interesting to say the least. Um, yeah, uh, I guess we should get to Q three. I don't think there were any more Q two exits than surprises apart from Charles. Um, yeah, we are obviously Sergeant B12, and yeah, that's about it. Um, okay, Ricardo again, okay, I qualify by is, is the usual thing. Oh, okay, uh, when it comes to the Q3, um, it was pretty interesting. Uh, at the start, yes. we have we had uh, McLaren at the top with uh, Russell quite close behind, and Mountain up there as well. First happened had some kind of damage from this Q1 uh, gravel incident as well, yes. so it wasn't quite representative in terms of qualifying. Uh, he was, well, in, in the in the area of Hulkenberg and Sainz, so that was not the greatest thing to, to I do. question if they, they fixed that before the race, or was he or was he dealing with that whole race as well? I think they fixed it, because 
I, I think fixing the damage is, is not the problem in terms of part for me because they, they cannot change setups, but they cannot change the, the, the engine itself. But I think if they repair some front wings and, and plates, I think that's, that's all fine with it. As long as they're, they say the same spe specification as they were, uh, before qualifying well, started. So yeah, I think they Is fixed I, it. Yeah. I thought he was quite slow during the race at some points, obviously, uh, we'll get onto that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I was, uh, I, I just thought maybe he was carrying that damage all weekend, but, uh, maybe not. Yeah. Okay. Coming into the final Q3, uh, let's recap the top five. Uh, George Russell on pole position, uh, a very, very unexpected pole yeah, position. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lewis Hamilton B2, so Mercedes 1-2, yeah. uh, oh, <laughs> even more <laughs> unexpected. Yeah, they were, they were, they were extremely quick. Uh, I've not anticipated that, that, that speed that they would have. I don't think you either, but you well, you predicted them to get P4 and I think P6 in qualifying based on your yes. prediction. So, yeah, very, very, very weird in terms of, uh, very, very unexpected in terms of uh, the pace they showed. I mean, in qualifying, they were, they were legit the fastest car, which wasn't the case for, well, uh, years at this point, <laughs> since, uh, since the last time they were the fastest car in qualifying. Yeah. Um, they also get a 1 2 in qualifying behind them, the, the McLaren of Lana Norris and Oscar. Well, actually, it, was not, it wasn't Oscar Piastri because uh, Piastri couldn't manage to, uh, uh, to improve his time. Max actually actually managed to qualify P4 in that damaged Red Bull, which, is a, which was a pretty decent job uh, from his side. Carlos P5, so yeah, that's about it. But when it comes to the points, I think in neither of us get points. If I remember correctly, right? That's why I went through the predictions. Uh, pardon? What? Yeah, uh, I think none of us get any points whatsoever for pool. No, I'm pretty sure. No, we, we literally get nothing. <laughs> we got Here. destroyed. Yeah. Last two um, notable mentions from qualifying Nico Hulkenberg in P6 in Haas. Uh, very close to the top as well throughout the entire qualifying session. And Alex Alvin gained into the top 10 as well in the Williams, which was a great for him indeed. Um, yeah, that's it for qualifying, I think. Any last thoughts from you? Uh, we're Tanya, we're Tanya, we're Um Yeah, it was good. Was, I was very happy. I was ecstatic. <laughs> yeah, I must have been very excited for a Grand Prix after seeing a British 1-2-3 in qualifying. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a... Must have been very patriotic as well. <laughs> I was so happy. I was yeah. so, so happy. As, as someone that supports the nation rather than any particular driver or anything, ooh, that was a happy day. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was. It was, it was a great time for you, uh, for you and the uh, entire of Great Britain uh, or yes, the United yes, Kingdom. Indeed. Uh, as uh, my country has never had a, a driver, uh, a Formula One driver. I think we had an F2 driver, but it's, uh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, uh, I'm yet to see a, a Slovak uh, Formula 1 driver, but until then, I'm going to cheer for, for all the other oh, ones. Can, uh... <laughs> all right, um, that's qualifying yet, uh, over. Uh, we got no points, but that was a very exciting qualifying, so I'm quite happy with getting no points. Yeah, we to the Grand Prix, and it was... It was a Grand Prix, like, deserving of its name. Like, it was a Grand Prix. It was something that actually had a meaning. Uh, we we were excited for it. We were thrilled throughout the entire race, at least. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the, the rain, right? The, the, the fact that the rain just kept being forecast again and again and again just brought everyone together. Everyone was excited. They were yeah. fully ready for this Grand Prix. Yeah, that, it, it was so amazing to be just forecasting for rain in the middle of a race because, yeah, wet to dry races are not as, as exciting or uh, compared to the uh, dry to wet races as when it comes to drying up, like the, the track obviously gets the dry line that everyone drives in 
everyone who's tried to overtake uh when the draw track is running up obviously goes to the wet part of the track and it's it's like yeah it's not the greatest thing but when it comes to the dry to wet races and this one was a dry to wet to dry so it was even better yeah. it was like all the all the changeable conditions we could get and uh, yeah it was it was it wasn't even that it was dry to wet to dry to wet to dry <laughs> oh yeah it rained, yeah. It rained for the, the, like five minutes and everyone was figuring out if the inters were viable or not yeah they were not. <laughs> just pure craziness throughout the entire world but i think i think i was like i was pretty much excited for the entire span of the grand prix which didn't happen for a for a long long time like every single lap there was something to look at there was something to be to be exciting for it's something to anticipate and yeah i was i was really happy to see such a grand prix uh again after well uh <laughs> the entire of last year that we saw and we went through it was a very refreshing yeah, sure. and it was it was amazing uh I would say, uh, we'll get to the results later. Uh, we should probably recap the, the race as it went on. Obviously, we started with the British 1 2 3, Mercedes 1 2. Now, um, it pretty much remained as, as that at the start. Obviously, Max jumped, I think, both McLaren's. Uh, actually, it was just Lana because uh, Piastri started behind him. Then it was like Mercedes were pulling ahead of Max. Like Max wasn't able to keep up with the Mercedes. Uh, yeah, not at all. Like yeah. he was struck. Max, for portions of this race, really struggled, and it was the fact the team made the right decisions to pit him for inters, and then made the right decision. Like Red Bull absolutely have to get top props because they did not look quick this weekend, but they made the right decision to pit him to inter before the other four drivers did in front of him. And then they made the right decision to put him on hards and so softs. Obviously, if they had a set of mediums, that would have been way better, but they didn't. And yeah, it just worked out beautifully for them. Yeah, I couldn't have summed up it better. Uh, Red Bull just completely nailed the strategy this weekend. Uh, yeah, compared, really. compared to some other teams, well, at least for Max, uh, obviously, Checo. Uh, was kind of a testing subject for the strategy. <laughs> I mean, he was put on the inter so so they could see if it was good enough for Max. I think that was yes. the main point of uh, of Jacko in that race, just that testing out the tires for Max. Uh, yeah, quite uh, and well for for Perez there, uh, as well as Charles, who obviously had the same strategy as he started from the back as well from P level. He actually climbed up to like P seven or P eight uh in the first few laps which was like pretty decent position compared to his qualifying position but they still opted to get the inters in which ah, yeah the the usual for our strategy of trying out things that that not the greatest time for like even even mercedes asked, asked hamilton to maybe we could try inters like uh, hamilton straight up said no that it's not the greatest time and yeah, yeah uh that's pretty much what a one-handed race, like his decisions uh, for other race and when to pay them, when to don't. Yeah, uh, for our strategy was uh, the usual for our strategy of the past few years, and McLaren kind of adopted the for our strategy for this race. Uh, well, they have for uh, for the past few races as well, but this time it was it was it was just not very good for both drivers. It was. Yeah. I'll look at that later. Obviously, I, I have a. I was very emotional in terms of uh, one driver getting very best strategy, especially when it comes to come to the changing the the compound. Um, obviously, when the when the rain came out, drive a spit uh, for the for the wet tires. Now, first time was the for the first one to get into the wet tires. Was after it, it meant uh, it was it was the time to switch to interest not the not the first time that uh, a couple of drivers switched like looks like Perez Ocon but then it actually started to rain uh people just slide off the track um uh, max pit it then it was uh, followed by by Lewis I think then it was actually Russell and uh Russell actually double stack I think with Hamilton so that's why he lost a couple of seconds but then Norris pit it after Hamilton but Piastri didn't. 
have you yes do you have any any logical explanation why they didn't pick piastri is that I was uh, absolutely really, really, furious for other race. Uh, what the hell, McLaren? Yeah, yeah, they ruined, they ruined his race. I, I just think they were like, it'll be fine. Um, I don't know if they knew how much time they were losing to the Sappen already. Uh, but yeah, it it was it was a ridiculous decision. It wasn't, you know, there was so much. He, like he could just slow down and then they could double back okay pretty easily um and they didn't and yeah that just ruined his race i mean he would have been out near verstappen as well and that would have held off verstappen so whilst we talked about red bull having great decisions this weekend i have to say that mclaren as a whole and obviously people will blame norris for not for saying he wanted to have the soft tires and so on but McLaren as a whole really dropped the ball in a lot of places. Uh, I can think of, you know, they, they definitely could have done better. Uh, and it was disappointing, you know, there was that, and then there was uh, putting Max on softs, and uh, yeah, they just they just really ruined their own strategy. Yeah. Exactly, as you said, um, McLaren, even even for Lando, it was a horrible strategy, but for Piastri, like, what the hell? <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, they literally cost him the race win when you cut it back, because so, he finished, like, 12 seconds off the lead in the end, and he lost, like, 25 seconds in the pit stop, so, like, uh, in the whole uh, pitting area. Cause... Yeah, he, uh, on, on those mediums as well, he yeah. was so quick. He was extremely quick. He made the right call to go for the mediums uh, compared to Norris, who went for soft. It was such a such a good call, but unfortunately, in that, in that space, I, I was so... I was pr- actually praying for, for a safety car to come out, just bunch up the field, so we have, like, Lewis and behind him, Nor- Norris, who's faster than him, then behind him, Max, who's on the hearts faster than him, and behind him, behind him, Piastri, who's on the first mediums. It would be so epic to finish that Grand Prix in that way, like to have four drivers battling for the lead. But unfortunately, uh, we didn't quite have the fight when it comes to the, the dry tires in the end. But we had some different emotions that we come to do, uh, kind of the, the winning of the Grand Prix and the winner itself, uh, obviously. Um, Lewis, I mean, what a drive! What a drive! Even yes. after that, he put up the soft tires, and same as same as uh, Norris, he just didn't look back. He just went for went in, locked in completely, didn't think about anything else, just about the win. Yeah. yeah, just yeah, I'm winning this Grand Prix, and no one can no one can uh, separate me from and the Grand so Prix. Tough, and I was I was beyond anxiety. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Throughout that, it was so so close. Um, so to see him win was uh, yeah. just monumental. Because uh, yeah. uh, it's been so long. <laughs> it's been like it's yeah, over nine hundred days. It was almost a thousand days since his last victory in Saudi Arabia. Jesus uh, well, last Jesus. official victory. <laughs> so so long. Um, yeah, I'm beyond happy beyond joy uh that he finally did it he finally won a race uh finally um because you know it's lewis hamilton he, he he's lewis hamilton he absolutely yeah. he absolutely is lewis hamilton <laughs> yes it should should be up there more often yeah. winning those types of races being amazing yeah he reminded us who lewis hamilton is like this this, this race was the perfect example of of uh of a seven seven time world champion like that race was just has to lose i think he ever since he got a lead from russell he knew he could he could win the race and he he pretty much made no mistakes especially in the strategy he put it uh put the right tires on but at the end the mercedes were were better than the mclaren on the soft tires so it was logical to put in the put in the Softs because I don't think Mercedes had any new mediums or hard tires, so the soft tires were like the best option for them, and it worked out. Lewis actually drove into the uh, 
uh, to the peak west part and yeah it was it was very close in the end uh, between Lewis and Max obviously Lando dropped off a couple of seconds in the end because uh McLaren McLaren strategy is one of its kind but yeah um a crazy win for Lewis I it was very emotional especially uh after the race ended they could see the emotions from him and uh yeah I think it was the first time I actually saw Lewis uh, crying after a win. I think I I never saw it in my life. So mm -hmm. it's very yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's very true. He even talked about how he's so used to seeing drivers cry, um, and he's always been like, "Well, that's just not me." Um, so to see him do it was uh, it was it was amazing, you know. <laughs> Is just just awesome. Uh, I, mean, I I didn't have any anything to anything bad to say about the Grand Prix win. It was just perfect all throughout. He made no mistakes and just yeah, he was it was his win, deserved win, and uh, and a win that will be remembered for a long time in the future. Sure. Yes, yes, definitely. Yep. Like, a long, long time. Yep. He's obviously broke some records. Some of which were al already his, like the the record for the most wins uh, in Formula One. He, he beat he beat his uh, he beat his own record. He beat his own record for uh, for the most podiums as well. He beat Schumacher's record for the most wins on a on a single circuit. He w broke the record for uh, for the most wins on a home circuit as well. Just uh, just the average Lewis Hamilton thing. <laughs> Yeah. Legend. Well, an absolute legend. But yeah, there was, there was stark differences between him and uh, a few of the other teams in the end. Um because you know, they they didn't perform like he did. Uh yep. the best way to put it. Uh I, I, do you want to go through the podium first, I guess? Yeah, obviously we had yeah, he talked about yeah. Lewis winning the Grand Prix, but we had another great drive that I think went under the radar a lot. Uh, Max Verstappen in P two. I think yeah. that was that was the absolutely great drive from Max in this in this Grand Prix. Uh it's kinda of over overshadowed by Lewis, but I think Max drove an amazing race. So yeah, um I think you have the same thoughts at the uh yeah, that's my expectation. Yeah, it was um, it was a mate. It was uh, you know, uh, I, again, I think it was an amazing course from the team. I think he really had to plant his foot down at the end, to try and catch up with both of them, not just Hamilton, but both of them. Um, and uh, he did end up getting Lando. Couldn't just, couldn't. Uh, so kind of, I mean, it's another lap, isn't it? We yeah. see so often. Um, you know, it's another lap for uh, Max to win, but this was another lap for, uh, for, uh, for well, sorry, for Max to lose. Like, uh, we've seen Lando catch up to him in the last lap a few times. Um, yep. but this was a, a one way it was Max. If there was another lap for Max, then he's winning that. Um, so, yeah, great, great from Red Bull. A bit worrying, I will say. They don't look that quick. Uh but we shall see. We shall see. Yep, yep. Yeah. And when it comes to the P3, uh, the driver that finished the P2, I think the most of any driver the season, Lando Norris in P3 this time, still on the podium, but yeah, another Grand Prix that he arguably should have won if there are better decisions from him and the team side. Yeah, definitely. Uh it's it's very difficult to swallow, especially as a as a as a big fan of Lando myself. It just I don't really think Lando is quite ready for a title fight. I think maybe next yeah. season if he gets gets the experience of fighting at the top, but right now it looks like yeah, Lando and McLaren especially just not ready for the fight at the top at the moment. They got a great car, probably even the best car out of yes. any at the moment for for credit for races as well but they just can can't really try and slide that into into the actual race wins and yeah that's just there's a uh 
I, I suggest everyone go and check out. There's a wonderful article on uh, Sky Sports. Uh, I guess the UK version, it might not be everywhere. But it's the amount of points Lando has lost in the last, like, three races. Uh, four races, sorry. Um, which uh, is just insane to they do. By the way, just, just announced Mercedes revealed double uh, header upgrade. Fine. Um, but yeah so is the like if you look at it in canada the safety car being called out means he doesn't win um in spain if he maybe fights a bit more in the first lap and doesn't get stuck behind russell for so long he could probably win there uh in austria you know the hit uh that's that's lost him some points uh where he could have gained some. And then in Silverstone, with, with those decisions, it is a lot of points. He can legitimately be on four wins in a row there, and he isn't. Yeah, uh, I think ever since Miami, he could have actually won the every single Grand Prix that was yeah. after that. So, like, it, I can imagine if it was like a, like a Verstappen or a, or a Maybe a Prime Hamilton or Prime Schumacher. I, I would actually like. I could imagine them winning that McLaren like a at least like three of the six races and like, closing the gap in the championship. Because yeah, like the McLaren was rapid in the last few races and it really deserved more, uh, especially from the from the strategy team and the drivers as well. It's it's very difficult to see. They obviously don't have a they don't have a bad lineup. Like Lando is extremely talented, and Piastri is showing that he could be like one of those best drivers in Formula One in a in a few years' time. So uh, yeah, they have a great driver lineup. They just need to get experience of fighting the top, get it in the strategy decisions, in, and maybe in a maybe even next year they could potentially fight for a title if they get the things right. Because they didn't need to learn from the season that what well, they, what well, they, what well, the mistakes they made, and they, they need to learn from that, and they just don't need to say, "Ah, oh, we screwed these things up." We, they need, they need to say that, uh, "Yeah, we'll learn from these mistakes, and the next race will actually uh, not make them and, and perhaps win the next few races." Like they, they really need to win the next race at minimum to actually like warrant that that play they have in Formula 1 right now is they should be at least fighting Red Bull for the constructors when it comes to Perez not performing but they just straight up not they, they're still behind Ferrari in the constructors despite Ferrari scoring like no points from the last few weekends uh, it just looks like like yeah the car are not there oper operationally uh, Ferrari obviously no. Ferrari are Ferrari, Ferrari, like they they have a great weekend. They just like become non-existent for the next four. Mercedes, they either have a bad car or just uh, just yeah, they just give up. I don't know. They they seem to be good in the last few races, but I just don't feel like they would keep that momentum for an entire uh, for, for an entire season. Maybe they will, but still, I don't feel like that. I don't think that's enough for. To challenge for the constructor style life. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just I, I, definitely, we're halfway through the season, right? So it's, okay. it's big, but um, I think the Red Bull would have to lose so much. It, it would have to be like this weekend, the Red Bull. Um, but obviously, with Paris just not performing, I think maybe they, it's. I think the drivers, because drivers' championships pretty much wrapped up already. Um, but maybe with the Red Bull not performing, we could see a little bit closer to what we think could happen. Uh, but yeah, I, I I think it's pretty much done in terms of... I don't know, but I think the Mercedes could catch up, but they just have to catch up with McLaren, I think is the actual issue. I think and also they... George would stop having to, you know, make mistakes. I think they somewhat did, them. actually. Like, I think Mercedes are on par with McLaren, at least from the, from the, like, the entire package. Like, the strategy team plus the drivers plus the, like, everything combined. I think they're on the par with McLaren. Obviously, McLaren, I think, have the better car. Not by much, but still have the better car. I think Mercedes are just more... 
more complete team in terms of all the management and all the all the yeah. stuff that goes on for the for the race weekend because yeah we, we still kind of forget mercedes won like eight or nine constructors titles in a row they know how to how yes, to exactly. win yeah. titles so so yeah they're still like they just got here and they already won a won a race well actually two races in a row um, in a race, i know pretty insane isn't it uh, yeah, we, you know <laughs> Hungary usually is quite a good track for Mercedes, so I'm I'm thinking it might be free. Yeah, when I actually look at it, they they got a they got pole position. I think there ever since 2022. I think 2021 was Max Verstappen, or maybe 2020 actually was Max. Then 2021 was Lewis. 2022 was George, and 2023 was Lewis again. So actually, Red Bull haven't got a pole position in their in their entire domination era so far. McLaren are looking like uh, an insane car in uh, in that kind of tracks. Maybe yeah. you could see like a Red Bull again in like the P three, but P four territory, especially for Max. I think per- Perez is is a whole different conversation. I think that we can kind of really predict when he's gonna end up, whether it's points or out of out in Q one. But yeah, we we could see some interesting uh, things in Hungary definitely in two weeks time. Yeah. Um, Okay, uh, we went for the podium. That's the most important thing. No points for yes. us there. But yes. B four, <laughs> actually B five as well. You get you get points. <laughs> Good job. Um, Snuck some points in there. Okay, <laughs> okay. From from the craziness that was the race, getting a points for P four and P five is kind of crazy. Not gonna lie. I think that's two weeks in a row where I've sunk P four and P five. Right. Uh, I cannot really check because of the spreadsheet, but I'm yes, gonna believe yes, there true. by. Uh, I'm quickly checking, don't worry. Which is uh, even worse for me. No, it, was quite, yeah. it, was, uh, it was qualifying. I got P4 and P5 by uh, if we yeah. last week. Okay, I'm I'm losing more and more points. I'm actually like falling behind in the championship between. You might lose a few more. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a uh, at some point uh, I'm looking at yeah, <laughs> fastest lap. Uh, in the end, was science. Ooh. Science. Okay. Okay. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Uh, and got uh, one lap wandering. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Uh, science got the fastest laps and no points there. Least impressive team. This is interesting, guys. Uh, who would you give it to? Honestly, I'd give it Alpine. <laughs> uh, I'd give it Alpine. Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, uh, I should. It should be fair because they scored points in like the last four weekends, and this time they, and they, they get knocked didn't out. Get in to drive on the grid. Yeah, Al Gasly just didn't even drive the entire race, and Arcon just wasn't quite speedy enough. Yeah. Uh. There's. A... Okay. Okay. I'm. Gonna, I'm gonna get. I'll give you a helping point. Yeah, I don't think I can argue for any other team. Uh, see if I... Thank you, Carlos Sides, for getting fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably the team that I would probably go for rather uh, than that. Probably, yep. Yeah. Um, is it person driver? Well, this is a difficult one. Um, there are a couple of good picks, and uh, I think Charles Leclerc is actually one of, one of them. Yeah, yeah, Perez. Perez. I mean, you you do expect him to be good. Yeah. <laughs> There's, there's being a lap down and then there's being two laps down on your teammate. I mean, last weekend was like, <laughs> yeah, was, he's like getting from a from from a new low to even newer low. <laughs> it's, it's getting lower every single week. I I, I don't expect Perez to uh, to be up there, and I don't know. I mean, what our driver would you give it to uh, apart from Perez and Charles? Um, I mean, it's, it's like picking probably, yeah. Uh, God, well, um, maybe yeah i guess joe co- out qualified yeah. Valtteri but us for the first time in the season and qualifying like p14 or p13 uh, yeah but yeah finish two laps down 
Yeah, but this is the usual Jew and, things, but he's still a qualified Valtteri Bottas. Maybe, okay, okay. Uh, and literally, there's literally no one else. Yep, yeah, it's just Charles and Perez, and uh, whether you even give me the point here, it's up to you completely. Oh, who did you put? I put Charles. Oh, uh, you know, I'll give you the point, yeah. Because, yeah, I think this was one of the worst Charles Leclerc weekends. I, I, I did not look at that at all. I did, I, I'll be honest, I did not pay any attention to the fact you put Charles there. I was just like, why are we have, you know, what, this, this, like, this debate. Like, um, when you look at Carl Sainz weekend, no, he, he wasn't bad. Yeah. Like, he, he qualified in, like, P5 and finished in P5 as well. Like, Charles yeah. qualified in P11. Or whatever, I mean, whatever. Absolutely, and, give it Charles. Give it Charles. Yeah, it was I just, the guys team, but it still wasn't wasn't quick for any, Oh, it's actually wrong color. I'm not used yeah. to uh, giving myself points. <laughs> Is that your, that's your like? It's my first points ever since the Austrian Grand Prix. <laughs> so, well, actually, does, Austrian Grand Prix. Yeah, was you got sprint, sprint points last week at least. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, at least uh, frequently. Yeah, I still outcord me in Austria. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a long while since I outscored you in a weekend. Like, it was in Miami, and yeah. Very long, very long. Yeah. Um, Most impressive team. Um, I think this one goes to Mercedes. Even though they, yeah, they I, still DNF for one car, what, what other team would you give it to? Because I honestly can't think of it. Was... Maybe, like, even if Red Bull Wayne made the right choices, we still expect them to be the fastest car. So, kind can, of given the Red Bull, obviously, Ferrari is out of the yeah, question. Yeah. Mercedes yeah. got a win, but one car DNF. The McLaren, horrible strategy. Aston, eh, I don't they know. They should be there. Has, they, they're sometimes not, but. Maybe it has, yeah. but they still, they only got one driver there because Magnussen. For me, yeah. for me, it has to be Williams. Oh yeah, yeah, Williams. Uh, yeah, they, qual- the they qualify like P nine and P twelve. That's uh, yeah, that's very good. and they finish ninth and eleventh. Oh yeah, right. Williams. Uh, I completely forgot about him. That's the, that's the that's the right answer. Yeah, I think uh, you know, almost getting sergeant in the points is a is a pretty incredible weekend. <laughs> Okay, okay, that's, that's uh, pretty true. They did, they did really quick, and they and I I actually really regretted. From uh, from uh, the practices, not putting them as my most impressive team because the car uh, Williams are always quick around Silverstone. Um, yeah, they were last it's year the, as well. It's one of the tracks they they are just quick around, like Italy, like um, I can't remember the Grand Prix. They were fairly quick around Canada. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I really regretted not putting them. Yep, um, both, both, but a team that was one of the shots for the least impressive team. Like, <laughs> yes, really yes, also. definitely, definitely. So, definitely. yeah. Um, at, least, at least McLaren, you know, got a bunch of points. Even still, if like, a, a P3, a P4 is not the greatest look for McLaren, especially after a weekend. And yeah. the potential they had. Okay. But most impressive yeah. driver. Ah. <laughs> my belief my belief in Hamilton sets me free. <laughs> um I like yeah, he won the race. I, I can't argue he against won. that. It's it's like he impossible. Won. Oh my he god. Won because this weekend was about Hamilton. It wasn't even just like he won the race. He won the race and like Everything was about him. <sighs> yeah, if if he would get like P two, maybe yeah, I could actually no, argue about P2. against that. But he, since he got actually the win after after such a long time, and especially all the circumstances and all the emotions, like you cannot argue against that. Even even if Max had an insane Grand Prix, like an insane weekend uh, when it comes to that. Holkenberg P six in the qualifying, P six in the race, a great weekend. Albon. Uh, P9 yeah. the qualifying uh, points in the race, but still Lewis Hamilton. That Lance Stroll beating Fernando Alonso isn't going to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not fair. 
Even low in Sarge and getting finish. close to points. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, all, all those great tries, but it's Lewis Hamilton winning the British Grand Prix, and it just it just has to get the point. Because, becoming, uh, becoming the most wins at, a, at one circuit. Yeah, well. yeah, a lot of records broken. Just, yeah. Most, it, of, most point. of them were already here, so. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. Okay, uh, actual prediction, Ricardo breaks Snowda, that's the exact opposite, and uh, Car plus DNF's first lap. Um, does this count for Gasly? Because he actually didn't start a first lap, so technically it doesn't does count. It does say did not start, it said did not finish. But he didn't even got the grid, he just came to the pits and DNF. But, okay, here's... <laughs> oh, I know he does say he did not start the official F1 uh, thing, so yeah, you're right. He didn't first lap. Is that, there, was, there were no DNFs in the first lap. I'm line. willing to not get a point here because I got Alpine, I'll be honest. <laughs> because you gave me Alpine, I'm willing to not argue about this because it says officially he did not start on the uh, F1 um, uh, website. Yeah. Either way, you're now... Which is a shame, because I could have scammed another point now. <laughs> okay, I think you have enough points, I'll say. You should probably... You should probably... Uh, <laughs> you should probably predict some Logan Sargent's for the victory, I'll say. That will help me a bit. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought I was actually like going with a very conservative predictions. Like, I was like thinking, yeah, this, this was the weekend that I'm going to get a lot of points out. I'm actually getting outscored by three points. Like, what is this? I'm 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 trailing by six points. Uh, how how they how they actually catch up? I, I don't I don't know. We're we're twelve races in of twenty four and already six losing by six points. It's it's a lot. Like yes, it is. It is indeed. I I've, I've cooked. Like you predicted the British one two three, you get no points from that. Still upscoring me for three points. <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's crazy. I, I gotta I gotta get some get some luck in. I don't know. They could have eat like let's let's not mess around here. If George Russell's engine doesn't blow up, um, if uh, this, if everyone gets their uh, things better, I could have easily got that one two three as well. <laughs> That's kind of true. Gets that strategy better. But I still think Russell would have finished behind Hamilton this race. Like, even, even That's right. without the, the engine near enough. Uh, Piastri should have finished in the top three, in my opinion. And uh, Science, I mean, P5 was probably the only place he could have finished, unless he would have made a mistake or the strategy team would have done something Ferrari like. Uh, luckily they didn't, so Carlos actually finished P5. Uh, Hawker P6. Then uh, P7 for uh, P7 and P8 for Aston Martin, so uh, good points from them after the horrible weekends they've had in the last few, uh, last few weekends, obviously. Um, especially Fernando Alonso still getting beaten by Stroll. I think that was. It was a good weekend by the last Stroll. Like, uh, it has to be sad. Like, Lance. Had a great weekend. Yes, yeah, and a superb weekend, definitely. Uh, okay, then obviously P9, Alex Albert, I think, right? Uh, yes. So a great driver from him, Yuki Tsunoda, a very, very, well, uh, invisible points paint position that, I mean, there, there's like zero talks about Yuki's weekend all throughout it. Literally, beat Ricardo in both sessions and scored a point is still like no one cares about Suda because there are so many great drives. It, it's crazy. Um I, apart from it it's like nothing really much to talk about. Obviously Sergeant P eleven, we already mentioned that it's uh Lauren Williams being good because still he got he got beaten by Alban pretty convincingly uh in both sessions. So yeah. Um P twelve, I think Magnuson too. Yeah. Uh oh all right, recovery, not the greatest one ever, and uh, all the all the all the rest, the positions were very exciting. Like like Alcon, Alcon, uh, whatever Bottas show Leclerc Perez. Like I don't even know where they finish on the stage, so uh, it's, it's just not very important. Um, yeah, that's the that's the Grand Prix results done. 
And uh, you are now leading by six points, going to the Hungarian Grand Prix. Mm. Yeah, we're two races before the summer break, and I'm uh, I'm already doing well in the predictions. So uh, I'm gonna lock in. I'm gonna get some uh, good predictions. Um, you were very far ahead at one point as well. I'm swear. Oh uh, yeah, I was, I was I was already six points ahead after the second race, but and actually eight. Yeah. Actually, seven points ahead after the Austrian Grand Prix. Oh, actually, Australian. And then Japan. It was equal. Chinese, you, you absolutely destroyed me. Miami actually got... I actually beaten you, but ever since that, I was just... Yeah, I was getting owned yeah, in every single prediction. Yeah. Uh, and this... This is the biggest gap of mine. Well, apart from Chinese. Yeah, I... Uh, you doing very well. I've only really gained one or two, but I've gained three on this race and on Imola. Yeah, I gained five in China. That's, that's crazy. Yes, five in China was yeah. definitely the big one. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be difficult uh, for me to catch up. You're doing extremely well in your predictions. You're, okay. you're, you're a good predictor. Uh, it has to be said. Like, even, even for MCC, like, your predictions have always, oh. always been pretty oh, decent. Yeah. Too kind, you can uh, <laughs> ignore the fact I put uh, put the team that won the last event in ninth. Let's uh, ignore that. Yeah, uh, right. my, I my... it's happened in the last two events, <laughs> I can't lie. <laughs> um, my history with MCC predictions is uh, pretty awful as well. Like, ever since I predicted the dodgeball for uh, for the season on MCC, so I, ever since that, I pretty much fumbled the entire predictions for, for forever. Uh, then I just stopped because I was I was just embarrassing myself for, for the predictions for FCC, and now I'm kind of embarrassing myself for the predictions for F1. But I'm not complaining because F1 is getting unpredictable again, and that's what we want. That we want the unpredictability. We want the fights. We want the close racing. That's what we got in the British Grand Prix. I'm very happy. Extremely happy. So happy. All right. Um, that was that was a pretty good one, pretty good predictions video. Uh, sorry, reaction video. We actually got it in exactly one hour, I think. Good one, serving one one. What are your final thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm excited for what we have in the future because currently it is really just going so well. <laughs> I, I I can't. I'm I'm so happy with how everyone's been going recently. Um, and uh, I think if you watch our very first prediction video of the season and our pre-season predictions, we are so sad about going <laughs> into F1. And like the last however many races have just been so, so exciting. Um, so I'm, I'm loving it. Yep. yep. Ever since Formula 1 actually got exciting, I actually stopped getting points. <laughs> it seems <pretty> good. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah, I, I should I should probably stop getting uh max and you're gonna lock ones. in. You're gonna lock. Yeah, I gotta I gotta lock in and uh predict uh I you know what I'm gonna predict a Piastri win next time. I don't know. But I gotta I gotta be more bold because apparently bold actually gets me points, so maybe I should be more like that. Because I obviously I got a uh, Piastri pulling qualifying, but in the race, like when it comes to my raw predictions, like they're the most generic predictions like you could ever see for a British Grand Prix, and no, no points from that. So I should be more bold next time. You got, you, you'll get, you'll get it done eventually. I'm gonna catch up. So we got some, uh, some exciting title fights for exactly like 2021, where Max was far ahead, but then Lewis came up to get. Only cool points coming to the final race, and maybe after the Qatar Grand Prix, we'll get, we'll be only cool points again, and then some uh, some uh, interesting uh, controversial decision will give some of us a point. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> Okay, I, I'm flashbacks. Happy <laughs> weekend. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I got. Uh, I, yeah, I go over to an over excited uh, or maybe I don't know. Uh, anyways, uh, that was the British Grand Prix action, and I'm very happy with this one. It was a uh, very exciting, and we both expressed our excitement for the next Grand Prix that are coming up. Obviously, Hungarian Grand Prix in two weeks' time. 
That is the Belgium Grand Prix and it's the summer break. It should always obviously bring some driver transfers as well. I think we'll do a video or two during the summer break because I don't feel like we can wait for that long without any content. No. Yes. Um, we, we, uh, it's, it won't after Spa be our, won't we be three quarters or two quarters? two quarters of the way through. Really 14 out of 24 races, so uh, kind of almost the, the, the second third. Yeah, when, when we when we have to do our mid-season drivers rating again. Uh, mid-season is after the Italian Grand Prix, because that's the 16th race. So. Uh, curses, curses. <laughs> yeah, I, we, I think we have... Well, Originally, I wanted to do it after every six races, but after, after, I think after after Miami Grand Prix, actually, we didn't really have time to do that. So we kind of postponed it after every eight races, because still it's 24, so it's uh, easily dividable by six or eight or even four. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next recap is after Italian Grand Prix, and the next video is next week for a Hungarian Grand Prix prediction, so make sure you turn up for that. So we get some uh, more predictions in. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's exciting times. Indeed, indeed it is. Right. Uh, I think we can wrap it up, wrap this up. Um, you're absolutely destroying me in the predictions. <laughs> wow, well, like good job. All right. Uh, if you want to see us in next round pre predictions, uh, make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below what you want to see from us moving forward. And yeah, oh, as always. Until next time, see ya. Peace. I got it.